Alright guys, so today the guy came and finished putting in the repair sleeves. So right here me and Chase got our um, our liner that we used to check the depth put in there. It's cut down short because if you put a full liner in there then you got to get the tool to pull it out and pull the liner after you check it. So if we use a short one, we don't have to. So we run these bolts down and then that snugs our liner in there and give us a true reading of our liner protrusion. In that last clip, you kind of see how far they cut down to put the repair sleeve in, how deep it is. Let's take a dial indicator. Make sure you go three thousandths up for this Detroit 60 series. We normally measure it a couple times just to make sure that guy measured them and set the protrusion to three thousandths, but we're just double checking before we put it together. <clears throat> so right here, what you're watching for is zero and three notches. That's three thousandths right there. And then right here, me and Chase are taking the old rods off of the old pistons. In a rebuild kit, you don't normally get rods unless you order them so we got to take them off and clean them up to clean them we just use brake wash chase should probably have gloves on because he complained about that later but um we just brake wash them down get the bushing brake washed good and then we also make sure we spray brake wash down the oil passage last thing you want to do is have dirt in there that gets either in your wrist pin or worse in your rod bearing then we just use compressed air after he's done cleaning it to blow it off. Now, uh, I guess you'll see it in a minute, but he wasn't done cleaning it. There, right there, we sprayed um, brake wash down the oil passage. Then, like I said, compressed air, blow it off, get it dry and clean. As you can see here, we got all our rods cleaned up. And we're getting ready to start putting kits together. Chase, right here in the video, is explaining a little bit about um, the orientation of the piston. There's an arrow on the front of the piston that points to the front. And then he's also talking about the orientation of the, um, of the piston rings. They only fit in one place on here. So it's not too difficult. But make sure you read the instructions and the... Um, the manual it'll help you a lot if you get them in there wrong you're gonna have you know problems with blow by or oil consumption right there he's talking about the orientation of the piston towards the front those always go to the exhaust side those two cutouts I shouldn't say always but on the 60 series Detroit they do at least on the 14 liters Talking about the bearing tangs right there, that's what keeps your bearing from spinning in there. If you spin a rod bearing or a main bearing, uh, it's going to be a bad day. Right here, we're taking out the wrist pin. Just enough to get the rod in there. Put a little assembly lube in your rod in there, and then shove it in the hole. Be sure to get a little bit of um, assembly lube on the ends of those wrist pins. They'll get lube pretty quick because there's oil shooters down there that'll shoot the oil up in the bottom of that piston to keep it cool. But uh, you don't want to have a dry start up on it. Then here he's putting the snap ring back in there. Um... I prefer not to put the snap ring all the way in the groove to start with. I like hearing the audible click when it um, snaps in the groove. But just uh, be really sure that you get it in there. Like you see here, he's pushing it in there. And then just check it both ways to make sure it's fully seated. And 
Next, we're taking the ring compressor and uh, getting it ready to put the piston in. So you want, well, I guess he's going to talk about the ring gaps here. So the ring gaps, you don't want all three of them in the same spot because then you're going to get blow by and oil consumption and all that stuff. So you want to space them evenly. doesn't really matter the orientation of them, just as long as they're spaced evenly and not directly in a line. Just use some clean oil in your piston ring compressor there and slosh it around. And then also put it in your liner and get it um, sloshed around in there. You shouldn't have to force this thing closed too much. I mean, it does have a little lever on there, but if it's not feeling like it's going, then something's probably not right. That piston ring compressor right there has a groove on the bottom that helps you line it up with the liner, and then just give it a nice firm shove and you'll shove the piston in the liner. On the 60 series Detroit, you have to put the piston and the liner together before you put it in the block. There's no other way of getting them in there. On the 12.7, I think you can do it without doing this. Or you can put the uh, piston in through the top. Here's just a time lapse of us putting the rest of the liners together, so I'll leave you to watch out for a few. So now after we got all our liners put together, we put a little Vaseline down there on the um, O-rings. It helps them from getting caught in there and also lubes them up to go in. Kind of gives them a little protection. We got all our bearings in and assembly lube in them. Don't worry about moving the assembly, assembly lube around. Um, the only thing you're going to do is attract more dirt to it and potentially put more dirt in it off your fingers and gloves. When that gets pushed down on the crank, it'll... Um, it'll smash out so right there we put in our first liner kit um, um i shoved it in that's that tool is used to push the liner down so what you do is you push your liner down and then um pull your rod the rest of the way down don't um don't pull don't touch your rod really until you get the liner pushed all the way down or you pull the rod out of the um, out of the bottom of the liner and then you'll have to potentially put new rings in it if something happens to them or you could um, or you might get lucky and just be able to pull it back out without damage and then you'll just have to put the kit back together either way you don't want to do that chase is actually under the truck right now and as i put the liner kit in he catches it Kind of helps with guiding onto the crank so you don't scar up your crank. And then after I push them down, I take them back out and I put the bolts back in there just to double check the liner protrusion with the new liners. We just want to be sure that uh, before we put the head on, we want to be sure that our protrusion is still three. Well, above zero, but we like to see three, so we want to see it at three. Here in a minute, when I put number five in, I don't know that you'll see it in the video, but number five almost slid out of the bottom of the liner. 
and luckily Chase had his hand down there to catch it. But that's just why it's super important to have somebody underneath the truck to help you guide them in. I think it, it took us about 40 minutes to put all these in, so not too bad. There you can see I'm wiping out the lip of each of one of those uh, counter bores. You want to do that to make sure you don't have no debris. I also wipe the lip of the um, liner. You just don't want to have any debris in there that might uh, cause your liner to be off, offset a little bit. Cause it to have a little bit too much protrusion. Everything measured out good, so we're done with that, and we're just going to cover it up, and tomorrow we will be ready to put the head on there after we uh, wipe it down. But that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you want to stay tuned, the head assembly will be in the next video, and then probably the video after that we'll have it fired up. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.